how I got to be in the county final and score the winning goal. It's called, today I scored the winning goal. <coughs> when I was just a young lad, maybe three or four, I longed to wear the blue and sash and go hurling with Clonmore. But great hurlers, they are born, not made. And I think I left it late. You see, I didn't get a hurley till I was 28. <laughs> Still off I went to training to practice all the drills. I was handy at the running, but useless at the skills. A game of backs and forwards would very soon begin. But I was sent behind the goal to put the balls back in. <laughs> I still encounter problems, for when I drew up the schlitter, no matter how I swung the hurl, I simply couldn't hit her. <laughs> I didn't make the team that year, and I was very low. Back then, there was no live line, so I couldn't talk to Joe. <laughs> still, I turned up for the final, and I talked out with the rest. The players all got jerseys. I just wore me vest. <laughs> well, our boys played with the wind in the first half, but the boys from the Glen, well, they played with the ball. <laughs> so while we were playing with the wind, and they were playing with the ball, the Glen boys scored 2-7, and our boys scored very little. <laughs> the second half was better. We made a great comeback. With just five minutes left to play, we had him on the rack. Our boys leading by two points, the time was nearly up. Our captain, he was thinking, soon he'd lift that cup. Our substitutes out on the line already celebrating. <laughs> Not me, <laughs> no, I was still there waiting. Waiting for my chance to come, that I might get the call. And I'd be asked to play my part in the greatest game of all. Then, our number 12 got injured. A bad blow to the knee. <laughs> the manager looked down the bench. <laughs> no one there but me. <laughs> he scratched his head, he looked around, his options there were few. The selector said, we'll bring on Jice. So what harm can he do? <laughs> God help that poor selector, if only then he knew. Well, I jumped sprightly from the bench and I was feeling tough. I threw me helmet on the ground. Me head was hard enough. I slipped the referee me note up forward I did go and gave the corner back a dig. It was just to say hello. Now, we had a good full forward. We called him Stoney Burke. He said, you just pass the ball to me, and I'll do all the work. He said, stick with your man and keep him at bay. And other than that, stay out of my way. <laughs> well, no sooner had he spoke those words than the first ball came my way. I fixed my gaze upon it, and I began to pray. The corner back stuck up his hand, but I just stood my ground. He had five fingers going up, <laughs> not as many coming down. I took the schlitter on my hurl and towards the goal I sped. But as I did, sure Stoney's words re-echoed in my head. I quickly slipped it out to Burke, he's standing by my side. He stood before the open goal. The Egypt drove it wide. <laughs> Well, I resolved both there and then, and swore that come what may, I'd take the next one on myself, <laughs> if one should come my way. <laughs> the puck out was quickly taken, it reached our halfway line. T'was grabbed there by our midfield man, I called him number nine. <laughs> Another high ball raining down, and I went up once more. This time the back was ready. His finger still quite sore. <laughs> well, I was two feet in the air when he gave the dirty pull. And before I ever reached the ground, he'd opened up me skull. 
the medics gather round me, said the physio to me, how many fingers have I on? Is it one, or two, or three? I looked at him through bleary eyes, just glad to be alive, says I, repeat the question, <laughs> or is the answer five? <laughs> Twas then I fell unconscious, and the ref was heard to say, get this fella off the field, there's a minute left to play. They put me on the stretcher, my journey off begun, the ambulance now waiting down near our 21. We had reached it, very nearly, and all would soon be well. But a handle on the stretcher broke, <laughs> and to the ground I fell. <laughs> Another bad blow to the head. My eyes soon opened wide, and boy was I surprised to see the schlitter by my side. <laughs> I took the schlitter on my hurl, I headed for the goal. I could hear the fans all roaring. I thought it was, go on, Noel. Well, I was only five yards out when my own full back I met as I unleashed a rasper into my own goal. Net. The final whistle sounded. The Glen boys won the game. I realised what I had done. I hung my head in shame. I sneaked into the dressing room. My face in blood was plastered. The manager came in and said, Jice, you stupid boy. <laughs> well, my career was over. There was nothing I could do. I'd ne'er pick up a hurl again, nor wear the sash and blue. Still I'll always be remembered, though I did this awful deed. For when I'm six feet under, my epitaph will read. Beneath this slab, Noel Joyce is laid. For the village team, one time he played. In the county final of 92, he proudly wore the sash and blue. It was he who scored a winning goal. May the Lord have mercy on his soul. <laughs> <laughs>